in the last stream we were working on trying to get a couple more bees specifically we were after this diamond bee here because we were running into a storage problem with all of the resources that we were getting from our automatic centrifuge setup and the plan was to get a draw controller from the storage draw mod so that we could connect up all of our new compacting drawers to that draw controller and then automatically send all of the resources produced by this auto processing setup to those storage drawers and then make them all accessible via the system and so that's kind of the plan for the start of today's stream and then after that i want to start working on a little bit of astral sorcery because as we saw right at the end of the last stream if we want to get the steel b nectar block we need to get steel before we get the steel b and to get that steel we have to make molten steel inside of the smeltering and for that we need molten mana infused coal which means we need to get some mana infused coal we'll bookmark that this is done with Batania, and we also have to get some molten starlight infused iron which you can get by smelting starlight infused iron which you get from astral sorcery so we'll bookmark both of those we're going to come to those in just a second but the very first thing that I'd like to do in today's stream is I would like to grab some combs from over here. I have between streams uh, taken out the sender module, so right now all of these combs are backing up again. The reason for that is that I need a bunch of coal and blaze honeycombs in order to produce the diamond bee nectar block to allow our current diamond bee to actually start producing diamonds. We do have quite a few fishy combs over in here we've got 51 fishy combs in there i do think that now that we have the diamond bee it is probably about time that we sunset our fishy bee and by that i mean just pick him up in a bee jar and stick him in the system but before we do that i do want to give him one last chance to prove us wrong and i'm going to quickly run through these 51 fishy honeycomb to see if we can't get just one diamond uh, to make all of that uh, effort crafting him worth it before we do that, though, let me quickly grab two of these Blaze B Nectar Blocks. Let's also go ahead and grab two of these Colby Nectar Blocks. And then finally, let's also go ahead and get a bucket of honey so that we can make the Diamond B Nectar Block over in here. Let's go boom, boom. And then I believe it is in here. Cancel that. We are after the Diamond B Nectar Block and start. Cool. That is actually only going to take eight seconds, which is fantastic. Thanks to that lava upgrade that we made in a previous episode and uh, we'll also quickly go ahead i guess and get this diamond bee into one of these hives here so that we can start making those diamond combs as fast as possible because we do only need one diamond in order to get the compacting draw up and running and i think we can probably put the diamond bee over in here because right now we don't have any bees in here because we got our lava and oak bee back in the system so we'll do something like this and like this and hopefully Fairly soon, that will produce our first diamond for us. Whilst we wait, though, let's quickly run through these 51 fishy combs and see if we don't get lucky with that 1% chance to get a single diamond. We actually got a diamond. Look at that. It uh, came quite early on, actually. We uh, we were about, you know, 10 in, and uh, we got the diamond. But I kept going, just in case we were going to get another diamond. I don't think we are going to get a second one. We didn't, but... We did get one diamond from that fishy bee, which in my mind makes the whole thing <laughs> worth it. And so now we can make the draw controller. For this, we do need to get uh, two redstone comparators. That does require a fair bit of nether quartz, but we do have three in the system and uh, a fair bit is actually just two. And so real quick, all we need to do is grab a little bit of redstone from over here and back over here, we should be able to craft up six redstone torches. That is enough for two redstone comparators one and two and that should be everything we need for the draw controller nice and so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and replace this oak plank with the draw controller and now for those who don't know we can basically pump all of our items into the draw controller and it will put them into their respective drawers so long as those drawers touch the draw controller for example over here if we wanted to put nickel into the draw controller you can just double right click and it will take that nickel and put it into the drawer and we can do the same thing of course with the modular routers so we have one router here and i think i'm going to put that router like this and we also do have two more of these sender modules and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of get rid of this setup we don't want the items being sent here instead we'll take this sender module and we will deselect 
this. Again, you've got to deselect the right side, which for me is one of these sides. You know what? I'm just going to craft it. It's easier to clear it by crafting it than it is to try and deselect the right side. Either way, once we have our center module, we're going to go ahead and shift right click over on this modular router, like so. And then that's going to send all of the items from here over into here. And then from there, we're going to shift right click onto our draw controller. And we're going to put that center module inside of this modular router. And that's going to move all of our items automatically from the centrifuges over to the draw controller. Now, technically, I don't think you need this many modular routers. In fact, I'm fairly certain if we wanted to, we could take this distributor module and place it inside of this modular router because of the fact that the distributor module does have a 24 block range. And these are within 24 blocks of that modular router over there. But I do think it's going to look a little bit nicer just to have kind of one item flying over the center as opposed to having five items all flying over towards this modular router here. And the final piece of the puzzle here really is just grabbing another link cable along with some more network cable, which we are going to need more of here. And that, of course, is going to allow us to hook up the draw controller in much the same way that we hooked up these compact chests to allow us to access all of the items in all of the drawers here via our simple storage system. Okay, so we've run the cable all the way over here, but the Twitch chat does make a good point here in that we should probably upgrade to the filtered link cable here, because the filtered link cable, which we may or not be able to make, it looks like we maybe can make it. It's a lot of paper. This is not the standard recipe that is required, but the filtered link cable is going to allow us to set the priority of the cables, because if you don't set the priority of the cables, there's a chance that items that should go into a storage drum might end up going into the link cable. And with the filtered link cable, you can set priority. So you can say, for example, that uh, this draw controller should be the first port of call so that any items put into the simple storage network should try go into the draw controller first and therefore should try go into their respective drawers. But then if they can't and there isn't enough space, then they go into the uh, chests over here. Let's see how much paper we have. We do have a good few stacks of sugarcane here. And it does look like for the most part, this recipe is just a lot of maybe even not that much paper, but a little bit of paper kind of crafted in a lot of different ways, along with some wool, which of course we can get from string. So let's see if this isn't craftable. If we make a stack or two of paper, can I then craft this uh, custom item filter? In order to craft this, we need six filters. I do wonder if any filter works actually. I think I might have just gone through a bit of a weird crafting chain unnecessarily. I think it might be as simple as getting uh, one lot even. Actually, I thought this was uh, three and not eight. It might be a case of getting just one batch, aka eight of these always true filters, crafting those into custom filters, yeah, and then using that to make the uh, link cable. That's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, to make this, we do need uh, four more regular link cable, which thankfully is pretty straightforward. And then from there, we can go and we can put these filtered link cable down right about here. And with that, we can now set the priority. And with Symbol Storage Network, the smaller number goes first. So we'll set this to like negative five. And that should mean that anything that goes in the system should try and go into that draw controller before it goes anywhere else. And it should also mean now that we have access to all of the items in all of those drawers from within our simple storage network, including, as you can see, all of the different nuggets and all of the different blocks. And so going forward, if we want to craft something that, for example, requires a block of redstone, we don't have to craft that block of redstone first. We can just click the button and it will move all the items in because it has access to them in all of the different forms, which is pretty nifty. Now, one problem we have run into right away is that we don't have a draw for cobblestone. Now, that's not technically true. We do have a draw right here for cobblestone. It's just not connected up to the system. That is where we can use something called trim to kind of fill in the gaps. Because between streams, I have gone ahead and moved this setup for generating cobblestone and then turning the cobblestone into gravel and sand. I've moved it from the old platform over to the new platform. And what trim is going to allow us to do here is it's going to allow us to connect up these drawers to this draw controller without putting down more drawers to connect them up. So the trim here kind of acts like its own storage drawer. Essentially, what we can do is we can break all of these blocks here and we can kind of use this like cable to connect these drawers to the draw controller. So, so long as the trim touches a drawer that is touching the controller and then on the other end, so long as it touches a different drawer that you want to connect, it all should just work. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like this. So this trim here is touching this drawer. This trim on the back is obviously touching the sand and the cobblestone drawer, so they're all connected. And then down here, this trim, I want to run under the platform 
down and to this trim because I don't really want it just in the ground, much like with the other cable, I kind of want it under the ground. People are asking about uh, frame trim. Unfortunately, chat, we don't have the mod installed that lets you make any kind of framed storage drawers. Sometimes that is in pinks, but we don't have any frame drawers. We don't have any frame trim. It's just not available. And so we do have to go with regular compacting drawers, regular storage drawers, and regular trim. And there we go, look at that. We've got oak trim all the way across. And now if we go and check over here, we should see that uh, the cobblestone is available to us. I can't help but notice the cobblestone isn't available to us. Let me check the gravel here. The gravel is available to us. The cobblestone, oh, is also available to us. It was just uh, updating, perfect. Okay, cool. So that is now connected. And so now cobblestone is capable of being placed in this drawer here. The next problem that we run into is that this drawer is full. It's completely full on cobblestone, which is to be expected. So there's a few things we probably want to do here. I think we probably don't need the cobblestone B anymore because we've already got unlimited cobblestone, of course, coming in via our cobblestone generator. And we've also already got a ton of cobblestone honeycomb now. We've got a few hundred to the point where an extra cobblestone B probably isn't necessary. So we should almost certainly get rid of this cobblestone so that no more combs come in. And we should also slowly but surely start uh, getting all of these cobblestone bees back into jars and back into the system just so that things don't clog up too much. One thing we can also do though, if we want to still be able to kind of pump things into these drawers here is we could look at getting a void upgrade. This guy is an upgrade you can put into the storage drawer, which by the way, storage drawers can take upgrades. If you uh, shift right click, you'll see all of these upgrade slots here. The void upgrade destroys excess items. So that would allow this router to pump the cobblestone into this drawer controller, which would in turn put the cobblestone into this drawer. But because it has a void upgrade in, it would then just delete the excess cobblestone because it's already full. To make the void upgrade, we do need eight obsidian. Eight obsidian isn't actually too difficult to get. It just requires eight buckets of water and eight buckets of lava. And then we just put all of that stuff into the smeltering. Actually, the Twitch chat has reminded me here that we do now have an obsidian B. And so if we quickly make the obsidian B nectar block, we can generate unlimited obsidian using the obsidian B as opposed to having to manually move the lava and water into the smeltery over and over and over again. The obsidian B nectar block here is just two obsidian and then two lava honeycomb, which we can make, as well as, of course, the classic one bucket of honey, which is in here, but is going to get wasted, unfortunately, because I have to click uh, X on this, although it might still work. Let me try here. If I do lava, obsidian, and I try and make the obsidian honeycomb, I think it is gonna fail. Yeah, you lose the items there, unfortunately. We should uh, we should probably not even have the auto-processing jar above the lava, because I feel like we don't really do that much uh, auto-processing with it. I think for the most part, we're making nectar blocks with it, and during the course of crafting those nectar blocks, I feel like mostly we just end up losing honey whenever we, uh, whenever we do this, which is not ideal. Either way, if we give this a second, it should make us the Obsidian B nectar block. We can then quickly go grab another B jar, grab our Obsidian B, and move it over potentially in with the Diamond B to allow us to start generating Obsidian passively. And then later in the episode, we can look at uh, throwing that Void Upgrade into the Cobblestone drawer. But it's also probably quite well worth it for us to get Void Upgrades for basically all of the drawers going forward because we don't want to end up in a situation where we, for example, fill up one of the compacting drawers with gold and then the whole system clogs up and then honeycomb start, you know, piling up on the floor over here, causing a bunch of lag. Instead, we just rather delete that excess gold, even if it is a, a tiny bit wasteful. So back over here, we'll get rid of the lava wood, at least for now, and we'll replace that with the obsidian B nectar block and the obsidian B. Cool. All right, that's gonna get us some obsidian passively. Uh, real quick, one thing people have been suggesting that we do is get a tank of some persuasion to store the excess lava over here because right now we run into a slight problem where these jars, when they produce lava, but all the dynamos are full, they then spew out the cans. And when they spew out those cans, they then stop producing lava. And of course, when that happens, we end up with no lava for our dynamos, which is not ideal. And so real quick, one thing we could do is make some kind of tank. There are a bunch of tanks you can make. The uh, mechanism tank here is not too expensive, but I think that the singularity tank here from mob grinding utilities is probably a good place to start. From there though, and we definitely don't want to use honey glass, we want to use our standard glass, or in this case, clear glass. From there though, you can upgrade the singularity tank to the jumbo tank if you make four of these, and that increases the capacity from 32,000 millibuckets or 32 buckets, all the way up to over a million millibuckets, AKA 1,024 buckets, which is just a staggering amount 
of lava that we can kind of slowly but surely start to back up on. So if we throw this down right about here, this should be fine. I think the temper jars here do kind of put the lava down somewhat randomly, although it might actually be nearest first because it has filled these two before these ones. And so you know what? It might not be a terrible idea for us to put this kind of over on the end like this. In that case, it should hopefully try and fill all of the dynamos before it sends any lava over to the tank, which is ideal. It also means that going forward, if we ever do need lava, we can just take it from this tank as opposed to having to take it out of one of our magmatic dynamos. All right, so now that that is taken care of, we can actually start working on trying to get the molten steel required in order to get the steel bean nectar block that's going to allow us to get unlimited steel via our steel bee. Of course, as we saw earlier for that, we need mana infused coal and starlight infused iron. And the starlight infused iron here is going to be by far and away the more difficult block to get because we've not really done anything with astral sorcery so far. And we need to get all the way up to a celestial altar, which if we check the quest book here is a few tiers up from what we currently have, which is no altar at all. And so in order to get pretty far in with astral sorcery, we're going to need to get a lot of marble. And so I think right away here, it's gonna be well worth us getting at least one, but if not two, three, four, maybe even five marble bees so that we can get a lot of marble very quickly. Because if we look at some of the altars here, the first one, doesn't require any kind of structure around it. However, the higher tier altars require quite a large complex marble structure. And as you move higher and higher up, more and more marble is required. And so in order to get the marble bee, it's thankfully not too difficult. It's a diorite bee with a sand bee. The diorite bee we already have, the sand bee we don't have, but we can make using the sand bee DNA. It is just standard Minecraft sand and some standard DNA, which we currently don't have, but again, that is completely fine. We can make that with clay here. So let's do a quick one of these and these. And thanks to the new revelation from the last episode, we now know that we actually don't need to make multiple of these. We can just make the one and we can use the bee bots to continually reset the bee breeding cooldown on these two bees. And then we can also use the bee box to kind of continually reset the growth on the marble bee as soon as it's born so that we can instantly use it to get marble combs. And so the marble bee here requires a marble bee nectar block. And the marble bee nectar block requires two marble with two diorite honeycomb blocks. So do we have any diorite honeycomb? We do not. That is slightly problematic. It does mean that we are going to have to put down the diorite bee again, which again, thankfully we do have. I'm fairly certain that the diorite bee, gosh, that um, radioactive bee is very flashy. The Diorite bee though, just pawn it on regular diorite. That is fine. In that case, let's go and put the diorite bee down where the cobblestone bees used to be over in here. And again, we're gonna kind of get rid of both of these bees now. They both serve no purpose. Instead, we'll go ahead and we'll put down some diorite in the spots where the cobblestone used to be. We'll also get rid of this prismarine as well. This didn't really work as I intended in the last episode, but we are gonna show off this actually working in today's stream. So let's do this. Let's throw down our diorite bee like so. And I think I'll probably, whoops, I'll probably also get a few more diorite bees here as well, just to speed up the process of us getting yet more diorite combs so that we can actually make the marble block. And then we'll also of course take the newly acquired sand bee here. And once we have enough diorite combs, we'll then look at breeding the diorite bee with the sand bee to get a bunch of marble bees. Okay, so we've got, I think four, diorite bees. There's one here and three more inside of the hive. And they are slowly but surely producing diorite comb for us, but we do need 18 in total. And it's going to take, you know, a few minutes for us to get all of those combs. And so whilst we wait for that, we can quickly set up the fairly small amount of infrastructure required in order to get the mana infused coal here. For this, we just need to get a runic altar because we have the rest of our Batania setup ready to go. For the runic altar here, we do need a mana diamond or a mana pearl. Right now, we don't have any ender pearls, but we do have our first few diamond honeycombs. Those are available over in here. We've got 19. That should be, I think, 19 diamonds if this is a one-to-one -one ratio, which it is. The 50% uh, there, by the way, is just for the beeswax, not for the diamonds. And so if we go and wank those into our manual centrifuge, we should be able to give that a quick crank, and that should give us a diamond. Nice. We can then take the diamond and if we drop this into our mana pool, it's going to convert that diamond into a mana diamond. Again, if you have enough mana in the pool. 
Right now, we don't have a lot, but thankfully, it doesn't take too much to make the Mana Diamond. And with that Mana Diamond, we should now be able to get ourselves the Runic Altar. Now, in order to use this, we are going to want to get another Mana Spreader. We could repurpose the one that we currently have, but the Mana Spreader, thankfully, isn't too difficult to make. And would you look at that? We have exactly enough Living Wood down over here from the extra logs that we placed down at the end of the last stream to get us the second mana spreader that second mana spreader is going to allow us to take mana out of the mana pool and pump it into the runic altar so let's go ahead and quickly do this take this and then we're going to place this runic altar down somewhere close to the mana pool i didn't mention it in the last episode but the mana spreaders do lose mana over distance so the further away from the mana pool you put the mana spreader the more mana you're going to lose for example we could put this mana pool all the way over here and have that mana spreader shoot mana at it but it's going to lose more mana the further it travels for now what we're going to do we're going to put this mana pool here when you put the mana spreader directly next to the mana pool that allows it to pull mana directly from that mana pool and you'll see once again by default it is connected to this runic altar and so now as soon as we put a valid recipe onto this runic altar the mana spreader will start shooting mana at the runic altar providing it with the mana to complete the craft in our case, we need to put down nine blocks of coal onto the runic altar with a little bit of mana, and that's gonna convert into the mana-infused coal. Now, this bar at the bottom is a little bit misleading. If we look at the mana diamond recipe, this here looks like it needs a fair bit of mana, but you'll notice that we don't have anywhere near that much mana in our mana pool. The reason for that is that there is a diluted mana pool which is a much smaller mana pool. I don't know why this mana pool exists because it's not that much cheaper than a regular mana pool, but this mana pool here is, I think, I want to say about half, maybe even like a tenth of the capacity of a regular mana pool, and it is what is used in recipes. So whenever you see a recipe, it's telling you how full your diluted mana pool needs to be in order to complete the recipe, not how full your regular mana pool needs to be. And so we need substantially less mana in our mana pool, or at least the bar needs to be substantially less full in order to complete this craft, then it makes it look in JEI. I still don't think we have enough mana currently, but what we should be able to do is craft up some coal blocks. We are going to want to get even more than this, of course, and thankfully we do have some more coal honeycomb ready to be processed to get the remaining five blocks. And we can also, of course, take yet more wood here to get yet more fuel to generate yet more mana via our end of flame. Okay, so I've processed a bit more coal here. Thankfully, you do actually get four coal for every one honeycomb here, so the coal is actually very easy to come by. But uh, right now, if we take all nine of these coal blocks and we place them onto the runic altar, it should start the craft. And you'll see that it starts filling up this circle around the mana-infused coal there, and you'll see it's pulling mana out of the mana pool. I do think we probably have enough mana to make this work here, actually, which is very good. Whilst I was uh, getting the coal, we did also check in and the diorite honeycombs are now good to go. We got 24 of those. So we can now get the uh, marble bee nectar block in just a second. The only other thing you need to bear in mind when crafting with the runic altar is that in order to complete the craft, we need a living rock. As soon as the craft is done, we'll see a little icon that shows the living rock plus the wand of the forest. All we have to do is drop the living rock onto the runic altar. And then as soon as this is done, we can right click with the wand of the forest. You'll see here, we still got basically what looks like the same amount of mana in the mana pool but you'll see the icon right click and boom that is our mana infused coal done this can be melted down into one bucket of mana infused uh, of molten mana infused coal and then we need to get two blocks of steel in order to be able to use this steel b which means that we're going to need 18 ingots worth of steel and you'll see that unfortunately in here it doesn't look like that's going to be doable with just one bucket of molten mana infused coal because this only produces four ingots worth and so given that we produce four at a time we're going to have to do 20 which means i think we're going to need five blocks of mana infused coal and five starlight infused iron blocks as well assuming this also gets us uh, one bucket's worth it does so we're gonna have to do that a few more times that is fine though that shouldn't be too difficult for us to do real quick let's head back over here and let's craft up two blocks of diorite honeycomb and then going back to the marble B nectar block, we also needed two blocks of marble. So thankfully, marble can be made without the marble B. It's just a bit more tedious. It requires the starlight transmutation here. You can craft one polished diorite 
into one marble. Do we have any diorite? We do not. That would have been far too easy. But of course, we do have the diorite comb here, and we can quickly process that over in our mechanical centrifuge to get us a couple of blocks of diorite. Specifically, we need at least four here to allow us to craft some polished diorite, and then we can place that polished diorite underneath our astral sorcery crystal over here, just like we did at the start of the pick, and that should transform into marble. We do only need two marble, so we'll go ahead and do this twice, at which point we can take both of those pieces and throw them into our jar system with the diorite blocks and some liquid honey, and that should get for us the marble bee nectar block. Nice. So let's go and figure out where we're gonna put the marble bee nectar block. We are kind of getting to the point where this area of the base is quite full now, but I guess we can probably take the diorite bees back out of here and replace the diorite in the ground here with marble. And of course we do want to take the diorite bee and use this to get our first marble bee. So over in here, we do have the sand bee that we placed down earlier. And in order to breed these, all we need to do is get ourselves a few more pieces of diorite. Unfortunately, I don't think the uh, polished diorite is gonna work, but over here we can do this one or two more times, or I guess maybe three or four more times, because again, I think we are gonna wanna get quite a few marble bees here. So we'll take a fair few pieces of diorite. And then I'm also assuming that the sand bees just require sand in order to breed, I think that is the case. It is indeed, nice. Okay, so let's go over in here, make sure we've got our bee box on us so that we can do this multiple times in a row. We're gonna right click on our sand bee with the sand. We're gonna right click on our diorite bee with the diorite. That should get us a baby marble bee that we can then instantly pick up and put back down. That gets us a fully grown marble bee. And then we can do the same thing again. We can reset both the diorite and the sand bee we should definitely get some more jars and empty this box out because it's way too full. And then we can do the same again. We can do diorite and sand. That's gonna get us another marble bee. And we're essentially gonna do this a few more times until we have, you know, three, four, five marble bees. And then we'll move them all over into the same enclosure where the diorite bees just were. And that's gonna start producing for us marble cups, which of course we can then process into marble blocks. Okay, so we have got a lot of marble bees now there's two in here and then there's like five or six more out here we might have eight marble bees there's a lot of them we can maybe even look at upgrading the hive here to a higher tier hive to let more bees in and to produce more combs potentially i've also put the marble neck to be block up out of the floor initially i was going to put it in the floor here but i think the more faces that you have available the more marble bees can pollinate at once because i think only one bee at a time can pollinate uh, on the block, but it's on each face of the block. So if you have, like we do here, four faces of the block available, you'll see the bees can pollinate on multiple sides, much like our cobblestone bees did earlier in the pack when they were pollinating on the walls and the ceiling of the uh, the old base that we had. So I'm hopeful that this is gonna get us a decent amount of marble because we need a ton of marble for astral sorcery. And of course we need to process all of this marble honeycomb into marble blocks. Unfortunately, unlike with the coal, we don't get four at a time, we just get the one marble block at a time. And so looking at astral sorcery here, we need to get all the way up to the celestial altar. To do that, we first have to start out with the luminous crafting table. This is thankfully a pretty easy uh, crafting table to make. All we need to do is get a standard Minecraft crafting table, so four oak planks, and we have to place that in line with the crystal. We have to send it some starlight power. Again, for us right now, we can put it down right about here. And that should convert. Nice. I guess we do need to pick it up if we want the quest to complete. Perfect. And we can really put this wherever we want. It doesn't have to go down here, so we can put it on the side for now. That is completely fine. And if we want to upgrade to the starlight crafting altar, this is where we need to make not only the starlight crafting altar itself, which is this recipe down here, we also need to build the multi-block structure around it. And it's basically all marble all the time. We need marble bricks, which are just marble crafted. We need chiseled marble, which is marble crafted. We need marble arch, which you guessed it is marble crafted. We need marble pillars, which is also marble crafted. And we need sooty marble, which is marble with coal. So none of that is actually very difficult. It just requires a lot of marble to make. As far as the starlight crafting altar is concerned, this requires a bucket of liquid starlight, a rock crystal, and then some more of those marble pillars and chiseled marble. So the rock crystal and the liquid starlight are what we can kind of work on whilst we wait here. The liquid starlight is something that we can get via the use of the light well. The light well here is made inside of the luminous crafting table with 
Ruined Marble, which you guess it, more crafted marble, along with the aforementioned Rock Crystal and two Aquamarine. So in this pack, the Aquamarine and the Rock Crystal are both kind of made in the same way. Make sure you get the right Rock Crystal. This one is an attuned Rock Crystal. We just want the regular Rock Crystal. These are both made using the block to item mutation of the bees. And this is kind of what we were trying to show off in the last episode with the Prismarine, but we didn't quite get working. The way this works is we put down a hive, much like we've already done. And between streams, I have made a few new hives and I've also made some dedicated space over here for this very process. Essentially, what we wanna do, we wanna put the hive down right at the back of these little areas. And we want to put the pollinating block all the way on the other side. And then we want to put the items that we're gonna transmute in between the pollinating block and the tier two hive. Because the way it works is you need your bee to first go and pollinate on a block, and then you need it to fly over the block that you want to transform. And so in our case here, we need to take our marble bees, get them to pollinate on the marble bee nectar block, and then get them to fly over some sand and some marble pillars in order to get both aquamarine and rock crystals, respectively. And so real quick, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use our bee box here to collect basically all of these bees so that we can somewhat safely try and acquire this nectar block. We of course do need more marble, but temporarily over here, if we place this marble nectar block down, let's say right about here, we can still get out because we've got enough of the bee glass. We can then take the sand and we can place that sand down like this. Unfortunately, we can't put it here because the bees wouldn't be able to get in and we could maybe do with making this bigger so we can do more uh, kind of transmuting at once. But if we now go ahead and release these bees, uh, by the way, shift right click releases all the bees in your block. But in fact, you know what? We can just do this with one bee actually just to kind of show it working. If we leave one bee in here and let it pollinate on the block, after it pollinates, it's gonna fly back towards the hive. As it flies back, we should see it transform the sand here into aquamarine. Look at that, nice. Okay, cool, so it does work. Again, the problem currently is just that it takes a little bit of time. And of course, we can put another bee down, we can do the whole thing again, and we can do the same thing with the marble pillars as well. And so if we go over here, we should hopefully have a few more marble honeycomb, and we wanna make sure those don't get processed. Although, although uh, don't get processed, although to be fair, I don't think it should matter too much if they do get processed. Uh, another thing we should bear in mind though is that I think we're gonna be clogging here quite regularly because we do have quite a few uh, resources now coming through that don't have a spot. For example, there's no spot for diamonds, there's no spot for blazers, there's no spot for the new marble. There's quite a few things that are going to need more draws. And so real quick, what I am going to do is I'm gonna get more aquamarine, I know that we need a ton of it, but we do need some. I'm also gonna get some more marble here so we can make our first set of marble pillars. And then the process is basically the exact same. We put those marble pillars down instead of putting the sand down, and that's going to allow us to make the rock crystals. And then we can combine all of that up, hopefully, into our first uh, light well, which I will also go ahead and bookmark. This should be fairly straightforward. The Twitch chat is right here in that we can make the stone cutter to allow us to more quickly and easily, and I guess slightly more efficiently, convert our marble into whatever block we want to convert it here. So for example, if we don't make chisel marble before, it was gonna be a bit more expensive because it requires four marble minimum. Whereas this way we can get the exact amount of marble pillars or the exact amount of chisel marble that we want in any one go, which I think is, is probably better for us. Uh, over here though, if we do this, and as soon as this guy goes to pollinate, oh, look at that, he's already pollinated. Can I, I was really hoping, I wonder if we pick him up after he's pollinated using a bee jar instead of a bee box. I wonder if we can have them go over the same area multiple times and kind of, you know, have it fly over, catch it before it goes in and then replace down more marble pillars and then put it back down again. I don't know if that works, it might do, but we do have a rock crystal here. And so what we should now be able to do is we should be able to make this light well. Now the light well does need to be made in the luminous crafting table. It also requires two chiseled marble and two ruined marble. Thankfully, over here, we should be able to get two ruined marble and two chiseled marble. And then back over at our luminous crafting table, we should be able to put all of this together to get ourselves a light well. I am mistaken though, we need three ruined marble, not two. And boom. So now we do need enough starlight for this to work. You'll see the starlight bar is kind of filling up here. I am not actually sure if we link the attuned rock crystal that we have in uh, the sky, if we link that to the table using our uh, linking tool, does that increase the amount of starlight? It might do, but it also might be the case that we have to move our luminous crafting table to 
somewhere else in the world that just has more starlight passively. If I do this and this, does that increase the amount of starlight? Oh, I'm a fool. The craft is ready to go. We just need to get the resonating wand in order to actually craft this. It does look like the uh, amount of starlight does go up if you connect the crystal, which is good. But the resonating wand here is made with two aquamarine, one green die, and two marble. We are just missing the green die, which I think is fine because we do have some mystical green petals. And of course we have our trusty pestle and mortar to make this happen. Cool. And so with the resonating wand here, we should be able to right click on the table and it should craft for us. A light well. Nice. So the light well we can place down. And here we want to connect this up to our collector crystal. We also want to put into it some kind of catalyst that allows us to produce starlight. In our case, we're going to want to get some aquamarine. We can learn all about this, by the way, inside of the book. I actually don't know if the pack gave us the uh, astral sorcery tome at the start of the pack. It did. It's right here. And so there are different chapters that you can kind of move around via these constellations. We're in the uh, exploration section, I think, here, and you just scroll in to get to uh, the actual chapters. And uh, under Lightwell here, it says, Crystals are receptive to starlight, naturally generating a dew-like condensate of starlight when exposed to high concentrates of starlight. Here it's going to tell us that we can use uh, aquamarine and crystals to generate that starlight. And so we can go put that in. Rock crystals are better at producing starlight, but we don't need that much of it. And for our purposes currently, the aquamarine, I think, is a little bit cheaper. And so uh, basically at this point, chat, we also just need even more marble because the uh, real limiting factor is just all of the marble here required to make this structure. It's not going to be too hard for us to get a rock crystal. And now that we have the light well, getting a bucket of liquid starlight is also not going to be too difficult. But we need to make this crafting altar and then we need to upgrade it to the celestial crafting altar, which is even more marble. And again, another crafting recipe here, this time with stardust and star metal ingots. The uh, star metal ingots, I believe we're going to get from a star metal bee. That's my bad. It's actually an astral bee. The astral bee, we're going to get from the same mutation here, this time by having the bee fly over a starlight crafting altar. So we need to make um, at least one extra of these starlight crafting altars to get that astral bee. We can then use that astral bee to get star metal ingots via the astral honeycomb. And that's going to allow us to make the celestial altar, which will then finally allow us to make some starlight infused iron, which you guessed it just requires a ton more marble with a little bit of iron. And again, don't forget, we need to do this five times. We need five starlight infused iron in order to get our first batch of steel. Okay, so I've made quite a few more of these marble bee nectar blocks. We've now got three in here along with our tier four hive. And over in the back room, I've made a fourth uh, marble bee nectar block to get uh, stuff over here as well. And there's also uh, more marble combs that we could cheer out of here, but there's currently no campfire under there. So if I did, the bees would attack me and die, which is not ideal. Over in here, I put down all of our diorite bees and some diorite blocks so that we can keep getting a diorite comb, which of course is how we get more of those marble bee nectar blocks. And so marble is coming in slowly but surely. And I've also gone ahead and uh, put down a compacting draw for it over here. Uh, there is some diorite here. This is not meant to be diorite. This is meant to be for something else, which does lead me to the uh, draw key that we should definitely make. This guy right here, this is going to allow us to lock our storage drawers to any given item. Basically meaning that uh, once you've designated it and locked it to that item, no other item can go in, even if the drawer becomes empty. Uh, right now I'm gonna empty this drawer out and then I'm gonna lock it. If you lock it empty, that means that nothing can go in there until you put an item in, which for now is perfect because we need to kind of just wait and decide on what the next block is gonna be. It could be something like obsidian. Uh, we do have obsidian combs coming through or we will have them coming through at some point. But now though, this is all working as intended over here you can see we have these marble honeycombs they're being processed they are being sent over we do need about two stacks of marble i think 117 was the number that i calculated and right now we're not quite there but it's still coming in we have our marble bees hard at work and whilst they're working we can work on some other stuff that is required also whilst i was waiting for all of these combs to come in i did go ahead and make four more of these mana infused coal blocks again Really wasn't too difficult. Doesn't require anywhere near as much mana as it looks like it requires from this uh, this image here. It just took maybe two more stacks of planks and we were good to go. So we have the five blocks of mana infused coal. We just need to get the five blocks of star metal. So to do that, 
there are a few more things we're going to need. We have the light well now, and so what we should be able to do is we should be able to take the aquamarine that we made previously, and or the rock crystal, by the way, either of these would work, and if we go ahead and right-click that into the star well, it should start producing starlight. Now, this might only work in the evening, although never mind, look at that, it is producing starlight. You can see it in the bottom there, and eventually there'll be enough in there for us to take a bucket out, and I do think, as I mentioned before, if we do this and this, we should get more starlight. Either that or it'll work faster. But you'll see it's definitely going up quicker now that that is connected, which is good. And so what we can work on whilst we wait here is we can work on getting the astral B. The astral B, as we saw a second ago, is going to be required in order for us to get the star metal ingots, and those star metal ingots are required for some of the later crafts. Now, to get the astral bee, uh, we just need to get an astral bee spawn egg, which we can get by putting a starlight crafting altar underneath a marble bee. This we can do because this doesn't actually require the full marble setup. We just need to put it down under the bee as a single block. So for this, we need the rock crystal, one bucket of liquid starlight, four marble pillars, and two chiseled marble. So we'll keep that light well going. And if we come back in a second, we'll hopefully have a bucket's worth of liquid starlight. Over here, let's grab some of the marble that we already have. We need, I think, just six because we need two marble pillars, one and two, along with the four chiseled marble. Let me quickly check that that is correct. It's this thing that we're making. Four marble pillars, two chiseled marble. We already have the rock crystal. And so, yeah, now we just need to get that one bucket of liquid starlight, which hopefully we are somewhat close to acquiring. If I right click here, oh yeah, no, we definitely have it. Perfect, good. So back over here, we should be able to shift click in the recipe for this guy. Never mind. oh, I did this the wrong way around. I need four pillars and, uh, and two chiseled, not the other way around. All right, so two more marble pillars later. Let us try that again. Can we put this in? We totally can. Now, again, you do have to have enough starlight for this craft to work. And so for us, that means we have to wait for night to fall, unfortunately, because there's no starlight because there are no stars out currently. I don't think that this will work. That might give us a little bit of starlight, potentially, but uh, I don't think it's gonna give us enough to complete the craft, although it actually looks like it's not doing anything. This might just amplify pre-existing starlight, if, uh, if nothing else. We uh, should potentially look at uh, getting even more of the starlight out of this light well, though, because I think the light well is still kind of working on the aquamarine. I think the aquamarine will disappear eventually, even if we don't take all of the starlight out of it. So let's craft a few more buckets here to get even more of this. You can pump out of the light well. Uh, you do have to pump out of the bottom of the light well, I believe. If you cover the top, it's, uh, it won't work. So let's do this and this. Perfect. That's going to allow us to get even more starlight because, of course, we do need to do this more than once. We need one of these in order to get just one astral bee. It's probably going to be worthwhile to get at least two astral bees. Uh, we could then potentially just breed them to get more. But then we also, of course, need another one of these crafting altars in order to actually build the multi-block altar. And then after that, of course, we need to move on to the tier from there. So for now, I kind of feel like we just need to wait for night to fall. Okay, so night is falling. And as you can see over here, the starlight is beginning to uptick. You can see the blue line here is where we need to get to and the, uh, the white line is, uh, is where we're at. So that's kind of filling up slowly but surely. We're also pretty close, I think, on the marble front now. We have also began to process obsidian as well. Over here, you'll see that we are now storing obsidian in this drawer. And I think, how much marble do we have? We've got 84 in here, and I'm pretty sure we've got like another 30 plus kind of coming through, yeah, in here. So the marble is on its way. We're very close to our 117. I've also thrown a, a campfire underneath that hive as well, so we can harvest that periodically. And uh, over here, are we getting close? We're getting a little close. The sun is still up. Hopefully, any minute now, this will be ready to go. I've also put a singularity tank down over here. I didn't bother with the jumbo tank because I don't think we need to be able to store a thousand buckets of liquid starlight. I think the 32 buckets that this can hold is, uh, is gonna be more than enough. As soon as you see the icon, you know it's ready to go. Give it a right click. And I think it might actually transform the altar that it's in which is fine, it does, cool. So we can go ahead and pick this up, perfect. We can also go ahead and make another one of the other altars, which again is just a quick one of these. That's gonna transform it, perfect, good. So now we have our first Starlight Crafting Altar. Let's go put that down over in here. We'll put it down right about there. And now as the bee flies over it, that should transform it into an astral bee spawn egg, which we can then spawn and the astral bees, of course, as per usual, do require an astral bee nectar block. This is made with one bucket of liquid starlight and two marble 
honeycomb blocks, which I think should be completely fine. Again, we've still been harvesting yet more diorite. The reason that we keep harvesting the diorite is so that we can keep making the blocks of diorite come like this. In this case, we want to get one, two, three, four of these along with four marble, one, two, three, four. That is going to allow us over here to make two more of those marble nectar blocks, of course, assuming that we have enough honey to do so, which we definitely do. Let's do two of these, one and two. This should already be making the marble blocks. It is indeed. So let's just do one and two. That's going to slowly but surely produce the two marble nectar blocks we need. And then while we wait for that, let's go and grab a bucket of liquid starlight. We can then take that back over and throw that into its own jar as well. And that should be everything that we need for the astral bee nectar block. Boom, we'll throw that in there. And then back over here, astral bee nectar block, we'll click start. And yes, do we have the, yeah, we got the marble honeycomb block. We've got the liquid starlight. I feel like we might, I feel like I might have messed that up again. If I get another bucket of honey and I put that in, is that gonna not work because there's no, oh no, that might work. Two marble honeycomb block. Oh, it's marble honeycomb block. It's not marble nectar block. Okay, that is my bad. I need marble honeycomb. We have a little bit of it, but I don't think, unfortunately, that we have more of it backed up over here. We've got 10 there. That's one nectar block. And we have a few more in the system over here. We've got two. It's possible there might be some in the vacuumulator, but we might just have to wait a little while longer to get the remaining six marble honeycomb to finish this off. Yeah, we don't have any back here. What I'll do, we'll sleep. That's gonna take us through to the next day. And then once we have enough to make the two marble nectar blocks, we will hopefully make this happen. And we'll hopefully also see very shortly at the start of the day, our marble bee fly over that new astral table and get us our first astral bee. And then tomorrow night, we basically need to do the same thing again over here. Um, annoyingly, you can't re like cut the marble in here once it's been cut, which is unfortunate. But what we can do, of course, is we can get another couple of marble pillars here and we can use those to get yet more rock crystals because we do need yet more rock crystals if we're going to make another one of those astral tables so let's do uh this nope come on if i can back you up i can't back you up fast enough i was told by the twitch chat that we can pick them up and uh, and kind of reuse them multiple times to do the pollinating but that's fine we have our astral bee spawn egg and as soon as this guy flies over we'll have our second rock crystal and once we have at least 18 of these marble honeycomb. We can go ahead and throw that in over here. And that should finally be everything we need to make this astral be nectar block. And that's gonna allow us to start making the astral combs and hopefully some of these star metal ingots. So let's go ahead and take you and throw this down into one of our pre-existing rooms. I think I might throw it down over here with the, uh, the diamond and the obsidian bee, just because we're kind of running out of space. Uh, at the moment for more bees. And this should work just fine. There's only one of each bee for now, so that's okay. And we did get that extra rock crystal as well, which is fantastic. And so now we kind of need to upgrade our pre-existing altar again to this next tier, which should be easy to do. We've got the rock crystal and we've got the bucket of liquid starlight. We can obviously make the marble pillars and the chiseled marble again. But this time around, we need to actually build the structure required. So this time we need to build this structure here around the whole process. And so I guess let's head back over this way. We have the 117 marble required to make this work. In fact, we've got uh, two stacks of marble here, which is perfect. And so we need specifically 21 of the sooty marble, which is just marble around coal like this. We are gonna have to make a little extra, but that is fine, 24 is good. And then the, the 117, by the way, was us calculating how much we need for the next tier, this tier right here. You don't quite need 117 for this craft, but we can repurpose some of these blocks when we upgrade to the Celestial Altar. So I, I figured out how much we need for this, and then I kind of worked from there. But uh, over here, we are after 28 arch, eight chisel, and 24 brick. So 28 arch is this one here. So let's put 28 in and grab 28 arch. We then needed 24 brick. Boom and boom. And then finally we need an eight chisel and eight pillar. We already have two chisels, so we only need six more here. Let's do that. And then we need eight marble pillar as well. We've already got one, let's get seven more. Boom and boom, cool. And so now it's just a case of building this structure over here. And I think I'm probably gonna build it in 
the center. I don't strictly think we have to, and you'll see again, we uh, have used up our aquamarine there. So if we wanted to get more starlight, we would have to put another aquamarine or rock crystal in there. But um, I think we'll probably build the structure right about here in the center. And we'll probably move this to the center as well. I might even move it one block further up just to make it a little easier for us to work with here because essentially we're going to have, uh, we'll probably have to move some stuff around, but uh, we're going to have like a one, two, three like this. And then we've kind of got a three by three block in the center like that. And then it looks like we have kind of these little sections like this around the outside. So we'll move some of our endo flames to make room for this like that. And we're also going to have to move our light well as well. We are going to lose a little bit of liquid starlight there, but that's fine. The liquid starlight, not particularly difficult to make. Thankfully, I think this tank does retain it's liquid starlight. It does. I was a little unsure if that was actually going to work, but thankfully it, uh, it did work. And then we just need to build the, uh, the rest of this structure around the outside here and then throw the luminous crafting table down in the center. One quick thing to note, it's not really obvious from the picture here, but I believe underneath these pillars is chiseled marble. It might, you might look like it's a uh, bricked marble, but uh, we have eight chiseled marble and you can only see four in the picture. So I'm pretty sure that the chiseled marble goes both underneath and above these pillars here. But that does mean that we are pretty much good to go here. And it looks like we've got some good at timing as well because it looks like it is pretty close to being evening here. So once again, if we want to upgrade this table, we need four more marble pillars and two more chiseled marble, which we should be able to do. We've got enough marble for it left over. The rest of the structure is already good to go. I ended up picking up basically all of our Britannia flowers because I uh, was move, moving quite a lot of them and I think we should probably just move the whole setup elsewhere and uh, and put it somewhere that's not gonna interfere with our astral sorcery setup. But now, bank over here, we should have everything that we need to upgrade this luminous crafting table once again to the starlight crafting table. And then once that's done, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Once that's done, it's just a case of, I think basically instantaneously, building this. Now, of course, there are a few things here that we need, and uh, hopefully we have a couple of the star metal combs or the astral combs available to us either in here, but if not in here, then hopefully they've been processed through our system because we could do with getting some of those star metal ingots. Do we have any star metal ingot? Is that what's clogging things up? Aquamarine is clogging things up. And then if we got somewhat lucky, we might have got some... Star metal, we did, nice, okay, cool. So in order to actually make the next altar after this, we do need one star metal, another rock crystal, which again, unfortunately we don't have, so I'm gonna have to wait until at least tomorrow. But uh, we do also need two stardust as well. And I believe we can get the stardust using the cutting tool, this star metal cutting tool here, which is makeable with this new tier of altar. We just need some more star metal with gold nuggets and infused planks. The infused planks are made with infused wood and the infused wood is acquired somehow. We might have to check the book to uh, to see how that's made. But real quick, let's go see if we can't once again. Oh, hello, my friend. I see we have um, lost. Uh, do I have my sword on me? I do. I see we have um, managed. Whoops. To uh, to break. Oh no! Enough stuff to wear. Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we managed to break stuff uh, pretty badly here. Uh, this is almost good to go. Thankfully, we do have graves in the pack, and so you can just go ahead and uh, right-click. And by right-click, I mean you can break the grave to uh, to get all of your stuff back. Let me press F7 here. What if I... Oh, it's just right here on the altar? Fine. Let me do this in here. This is good to go. Let's right-click with our resonating wand, and that should... Hopefully, I can also get rid of this now. Uh, but that should upgrade the altar. Nice. And so now that we have the upgraded altar... Again, we should be able to move to the Celestial Altar fairly easily. It does require some more marble crafting. We need more sooty marble, more marble bricks, and more rune marble. But again, we can reuse the structure that's here because I'm fairly certain that the Celestial Altar can do all the crafts that the Starlight Altar can uh, and more, which is exactly what we're after. Okay, so we've got some more rock crystals. Same process as always. And in fact, we do have even more of those cooking up in here. Look at that, we've got two more, perfect. We can throw another two down as well. Unfortunately, these don't stack, which does make them a little difficult to carry, but back over here, we do now have four star metal ingots, and we've got more coming in, of course, all the time. And I'm being told by the Twitch chat that the way that we get the infused wood is simply by throwing some logs into a uh, pool of liquid starlight. So if we do this and this, look at that, perfect. And then we can put this back in the tank as well. We can craft this down. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to craft that in here. 
I think that's true. Again, unfortunately, I think we do need Starlight for that to work. But hopefully, this evening, once the uh, the Starlight arrives, we should be able to craft the infused wood into infused planks. We should then be able to craft the Star Metal cutting tool that requires three gold nuggets with the Star Metal and the planks. And then from there, if we want to upgrade to the Celestial Altar, we need one star metal and two stardust. I think we get one stardust per star metal. And so I think four star metal is really all that we need here. And so I guess what I'm gonna quickly do is just grab all of the different types of marble here required. Other than that, we have basically everything else. We've got the pillars, we've got the chiseled marble, we've got the aquamarine, and hopefully, as soon as night falls, we can make the stardust. And so I think we are pretty much good to go here. Okay, so night has fallen. This is ready to go. Let's do a quick one of these. That should get us the planks. Lovely. I then uh, foolishly do not have the uh, the gold nuggets on me. I should have prepared for those, but let's go quickly grab a few gold nuggets. Thankfully, it should be fairly easy for us to make. We'll do this. And let me just check that is everything that we need. It is indeed. We do get a few more star metal ingots here, which is good. And so back over here, we should have everything that we need in order to make the cutting tool. Again, uh, just a right click here. I think it's only going to craft one of these, even though there's enough to make two in there. I do only want it to make one, although it wouldn't be the end of the world if we made two. I think we do still have enough star metal ingots to make this work. And I'm pretty sure that what we're going to do is we're going to drop these on the floor, and then we're going to right click with the cutting tool. Maybe left click with the cutting tool. Oh, left click with the cutting tool is the answer. Like, you've got to be careful you don't pick them up. But left click with the cutting tool does work. It's a little finicky but a couple of taps and it gets it there. From there, I think that's everything to make this guy. It is indeed, right click. That's gonna upgrade the altar itself, but not obviously all of the uh, infrastructure around it. And so once we have this altar actually upgraded, all we then have to do, fantastic, is uh, pick it up, I guess, for the quest book. Perfect, put it back down and then replace, there we go, it's uh, the torch was causing issues there, uh, and then replace the stuff around it, right? So instead of doing this, we need this, which is much bigger and uh, that should be fine. We can move basically everything that is around here to make room for it. And I think finally at that point, once we've actually upgraded it and we've got all of the stuff here to upgrade it, we should then be able to start making these starlight infused iron blocks, assuming we have enough resources for it. So it needs two, four, six, eight, nine blocks of iron per one of the astral infused blocks which means that if we want five of those, we are going to need 45 blocks of iron, which thankfully we do have, we've got 87 blocks of iron in there. So that is kind of fine. On top of that though, we also need 12 marble per block as well, which means we need 60 more marble in total for that to work. Right now we have got 13 marble, which is not 60 by my approximation, unfortunately. And so we are gonna have to, uh, oh, we got a little bit more in there though. And it's quite possible there could be some hanging around somewhere else. We have a little bit more, but we'll see how much we've got at the end of it. We do need 60, we're almost halfway there. And so hopefully that might be uh, might be doable, but real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, upgrade this altar to the next tier. Quick tip from the Twitch chat. If you uh, right click on the altar that you're like, building the structure for with the resonating wand, it does show you where the blocks need to go, which does make it a little easier to, uh, to place all of these down. All right, and there we go. We have our celestial altar up and running. We've got the full structure down around it. I uh, didn't think there was just some regular marble here, but there is, there's like three marble under uh, each of the pillars there. And so now we are in a position to where we can start to look at making, finally, the starlight infused iron. Again, five blocks of it are going to be required. Back over here, we are still, unfortunately, not very flush with marble. And again, unfortunately, despite having excess marble here in the form of marble arch, which was required for the starlight crafting altar, but isn't required for the celestial altar. I unfortunately don't think that we are going to be able to, uh, to make the starlight infused iron blocks today. Cause I don't think we have enough marble for it. And uh, unfortunately we're out of time for this episode. So what we'll do chat is next time we will come back. We should hopefully at the start of the next episode have enough marble. Oh, never mind. We have 41 marble. We still need to process it. And uh, that's going to get us, that should get us the 60 we need. Uh, we do have to wait for it to be nightfall, but that might be fine, actually. I'm going to crank this manually, just because that's going to make it a little faster. I'll throw that in there. Uh, I'll crank that marble out. That 60 marble combined with the 45 blocks of iron that we're going to need should get us all of the required starlight infused 
iron blocks. Now, in order to melt both of these down in the smeltery, the next problem that we run into is that we do need blazing blood inside of the smeltery because the smeltery needs to get up to 1,200 degrees Celsius. Right now, our current smeltery with lava inside of it only goes up to, I think, 1,000 degrees Celsius. And so we need to get blazing blood into this fuel tank. The good news, I'm pretty sure, is that the fuel tank does retain its, I think it retains its liquid when you replace it. So I'm gonna make a new fuel tank, which again is just seared brick and glass. I did make some more seared brick, and so we have that ready to go. I'm also gonna use that seared brick here to make our smeltery that little bit taller, because the next stage of the process here is going to be putting blazers into the smeltery to allow us to kind of melt them into blazing blood. If we look up the recipe for blazing blood in JEI, it can be made by melting the entity, in this case, the blaze, and we get 20 millibuckets of it per heart of damage we do to the blaze. And so what we probably want to do here is get another DNA spawner, which is easier said than done when we don't have any wood. And so in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and steal the pre-existing DNA spawner that we have over here. And if we drop that down inside the smeltery, we should then be able to get some blaze DNA and use that to drop the blazers in. Now, I think the blazers should sink kind of passively, but just in case they don't, I am also gonna block this up a little bit. It's a little awkward because the, I don't know if they're gonna get stuck in the roof here. I think they probably will. You know what, if we build this, it's, it's very awkward because I don't have enough seared brick, but uh, what I'm thinking, it's a bit of a janky setup, but if I do this and build a, uh, a ring of marble arch around the top, I think we should be able to then put another top like this on after the fact. And I think that should work. Let me go and grab one of my blaze DNA. We've made three of them over in here. And if I right click this, it should be good to go. I think you do need some kind of molten liquid in here, chat. I could be wrong on that, but I think some molten metal in there does allow these guys to be melted. So if I do this, they do have to be like in the smeltery, which you can see he's currently kind of not. Um, we could also maybe do it with like some smeltery glass, which I think we can make. I think we can make some seared glass. We should be able to put it down in place of some of the seared brick. Of course, that's easier to do if you actually have any uh, seared brick to make it with. We can throw some more ground in there. But as you'll have just heard, that guy did just die. And so you'll see there is some blazing blood in there. Cool. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and throw down our new tank. Again, thankfully this does retain it's lava, not that it would really matter if it didn't. And then over here, how much do we have? We've got 200 millibuckets. We need to take that lava out and get it into the tank. And so what I might do actually to make our lives a little easier is I might go ahead and place this down here, put the tank down over here like this. And then from there, if we grab one of our fluid pipes and our wrench, we should be able to move the blazing blood out of this drain, again, we wanna make sure we disconnect here. We don't want that extracting. We'll set U to extract, shift right click. That's gonna move the blazing blood over into there. And now our smeltery is capable of getting up to 1,200 degrees Celsius. So then the question is how much blazing blood do we need in order to melt the mana infused coal? If I put all five of those in there, it's already taken 50 millibuckets. I think that might be all it needed. How much marble do we have? We don't have enough marble. It is nighttime. We need to get that marble before night falls. And so real quick, let's see if we can't crank out all of the remaining marble cubs here real quick, and then run over to the celestial altar to see if we can't quickly make those five blocks of starlight infused iron. And there we go, 63 marble is more than enough. And so real quick, let us head back over to here and see if we can't make this work. So if I shift click that in, we've got enough for five. Let's right click with the resonating wand. I don't think it's gonna do all five at once. I think we might have to do these uh, never mind. It did all five at once. Would you look at that? Perfect. All right. I think, champ, finally, after all of that and after this horrific little <laughs> smeltery setup, we should be able to maybe melt these down. We are out of space <laughs> inside of the smeltery of all things, which is uh, is horrendous. We have enough blazing blood. Uh, let me move the water. Oh, I can't even move anything around. That's wild. Um... This looks like it's melting, but I have a feeling it's gonna have the same problem here. Uh, do we have, we didn't make the ingot cast, did we? No, but we do have the sand cast. And so what we should be able to do, just like we did before, is we should be able to pull out a couple of those Invar 
ingots here using this. Oh, people are saying the spawner might be causing the issue, actually, because I think the spawner is uh, causing the smeltery not to recognize the rest of the space that it has. If I break this, we'll go grab it in a second. That might give us more space. It does. There we go. Okay, there's a ton of space in there now. Perfect. And look at that. We have got two blocks of molten steel, which we can go ahead and pull out via the classic faucet. There we go. Flipping it. That was a lot of work to get steel, but steel is kind of the bottleneck that is going to open up the, uh, the next section of the pack for us. So we'll take this, we'll take this. Next time we'll come back, we'll get ourselves a steel bee because we still don't actually have one. And we'll also get our first steel bee nectar block. And then from there, we can get, of course, unlimited steel. And that steel is gonna be useful because we can use it to get into a whole host of new mods that we currently don't have access to. But of course, as per usual, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2 there